everyone, it's Will, Gamer Dad, with another video for you. So after a little bit more tinkering, I decided to take on EX Stage 2. Now if you haven't already, make sure you like and subscribe to my channel, I really appreciate it. I also do have a Patreon account for those who want to support me this way. So this one is interesting in that we have to actually last more than 20 turns. So I would definitely recommend counting in your head and keeping track of everything. I think the length of this video is actually um, deceptive because we could have ended it much sooner. However, uh, I think I miscounted and actually went more than 20, like something like 23 turns. Anyways, we can count along as we replay this video. So in the first uh, wave here, we're going to activate a turn 2 AF only because these are very annoying and can actually wreak some havoc on your team if you don't end them very quickly. And I'll show you why we can extend uh, certain stages if you need to make that 20 um, turn uh, threshold, shall I say. Anyways, you can see that with uh, AF, some AoEs, and some damage, we can easily end those. And so at the end of the AF, I decided to apply some extra shields. You got Earth Wall, you got Cat Dighty Guardian, even the Bambuku Shower to regenerate MP. And MP is a very, very highly sought after commodity on this stage. Because you have to last 20 turns, you actually have to play some, um, uh, I guess, uh, musical chairs of sorts, where you're going to rotate people from the front and back, have someone tank the front on this stage being that this is probably the easiest foot to tank and I'll show you why to extend the uh, fight and so that was turn three we're just dealing damage and we're not ending anything here we just used the EF on the previous wave but on turn four we can power up with another few attacks to get a half AF bar so um, note that we are using top T crush to try to apply power down to those two larger ogres because they can actually hit you for multiple uh, single target and so can the dog. Note that um, it's still only if about 1500 HP each hit but if they all land on the same person you can die. So that is turn 4 and we're going to activate turn 5 AF here and the whole goal is to end the two ogres while leaving the uh, dog or the hound alive. Now in this play uh, as I was recording, I realized I pushed the HP way too low. You can see I left very, very little. And I would recommend leaving around maybe a quarter, depending on your DPS of your team. And the reason for that is you're going to use this turn to regenerate some MP and uh, obviously extend the fight if needed. So um, now we have our friend Bertrand in the back to VC back in. And because he VCs in a rage, uh, we can have him tank hits. Now in this case, I actually mispressed the button on turn 6, and we had Aldo take hits instead. If you're wondering why Aldo is on the team, I'll show you at the end of the video, but he's actually to slave Grasta for Violet, because Violet's our main single target DPS for this fight. Okay, turn 7. And so he's VC'd in. Normally, I would use Overbear right here to for starting on turn 8 however I think it would kill the dog and so we're just going to again play some musical chairs and rotate back and forth on turn 8 here now if you had more HP on the hound of course you can do overbear and have him sit there and take multiple hits he doesn't really need a lot of MP especially if you have some power down VCs and for example I believe Nokoko has one but any other defensive unit you're going to use on this fight uh, would be enough I would say that her cat Daddy guardian really helps but i'm sure that you can use another tank in uh, place of her if necessary or earth dps or earth support all right so i believe we're on turn nine now right and unfortunately the pain ended the hound so we don't really have much to do there so we're going to start turn 10. so our favorite duo uh, from the earlier Ogre Wars, I think Mindy and Clughorn, as well as Psychic Eagle is back in play. It does have multiple HP stoppers, I believe two HP stoppers, and so keep that in mind when you are fighting this, and so if you are activating AF, you want to make sure that you are everything set up, or if you want to just punch it through, you can do those. So we are on turn, I think 10 now. Okay, so again, main thing is to apply int and power down on the enemies. This is going to be turn 11 here. Normally, again, I would have all four units fresh off the bench uh, at the end of that last wave, but in this case, we had to improvise here. 
and you can see that sword dance does a ton of damage and the one more active uh hit is really really useful uh being that it they are weak to earth attacks okay so we're just going to keep on attacking here we're not going to use an af because there is an hp stopper and again we are in turn 12 i believe as well now so i don't know if you need an int down here but we're just going to do some attacks directly at this point i was actually thinking whether or not i was going to do um brave step but in this case i'm just going to attack and hope i can bring it to the hp stopper and there's the first one okay and a turn heal from my Yumpha is very very useful turn 13 starts and we're just going to keep on attacking note that we do have uh shields up just in case earth wall cat Daddy guardian and sword dance here and hit the second hp stopper all right so turn 14 is starting uh let me know in the comments below how you've done in these ex fights if you've been doing them or just putting them off being that there's a lot of content out there okay so the aoe um AF finisher, I guess, is the Calamity Saxum. If you have shields up, you should be able to survive that. Although I don't know exactly what kind of shields you need because that is not a, um, it is not a water attack. I think it's just an elemental attack. Anyways, that is turn 15, I believe. So we are finished off and here we are on the last wave. And so depending on how many turns you took on the earlier stages, you can either speed up the fight here or slow it down. So in this case, I, again, at this point, the fourth wave, I didn't want to make a mistake in killing Mazuchi in too few of a turn. So I wasn't sure and I miscounted here. So this turn 16, I believe. And if you're wondering how we're counting, I believe every time we start is the beginning of one new turn. Of course, I could be totally incorrect about that. So if you want to play it safe, make sure you are starting the 21st turn if you want to make sure it's over 20. As opposed to just on the 20 and having to redo the fight. That would be quite annoying. So... This one has multi-stages here, and you have to break the shell just like before. And then the main body actually has a 50% HP stopper, and then it regenerates the shell, which you have to break. And then finally, you attack the body one more time. Okay, so again, um, note that each time you're in Earth zone or any elemental zone, every attack powers your bar by 7.5%. So you need seven attacks in order to get a half HP bar, a uh, half AF bar. And that's actually my strategy for doing a lot of these fights. By getting a bar quickly, we can just activate an AF right here. I believe we're in turn 16. I'm sorry if I'm losing track. It's hard to actually keep track even while re-watching the video. When I was actually fighting this, um, I recorded a few times and I think I either had RNG kill me a couple of times or in the case of um, the Calamity Saxum. One thing I didn't mention is that can uh, apply a multitude of uh, status effects. And so you'll need someone to remove status, especially stone. Stone can hit your team, and if it hits your team and you have no way of removing it, you've lost one member of your team permanently. So, of course, Mayumfa has the Bambuku Shower, which not only removes statuses, but regenerates um, 20 MP. Otherwise, if you have some sort of healer that can remove status, definitely pack one for this fight. Or, you can take your chances and equip Moon Realm Gear, which increases your resistance to status effects by 50% at plus 10. But that being said, you're still relying on RNG to survive the stone. And that one really surprised me. And actually, I was quite frustrated because I had made it, um, you know, no problem. My setup was good and so on and so forth. Okay, anyways, back to the action. We're going to bar it down. We should actually be at essentially 20 turns here. Um, and there you go. Powered, out, uh, powered it down. Just add any shields you need to if you need to. And then we are just going to wear down the boss at this stage. So, again, two rounds of Earth Attacks will get you a half HP, uh, half AF bar. And you can reactivate the AF bar to finish off the boss. Or you can extend the boss's fights an extra turn or two, which I did, just in case. Now, in terms of what you need for mitigation, note that I do have a 50% Earth Wall. I have a 35% Physical and um, Magical Resistance with Cat Dighty Guardian. I... If you need to, I can use a brave step to apply int down 25. And don't forget that even 
um, Mayumfa's attack. When she attacks with the top T crush, that gives you a type shield as well. So again, depending on what team you're bringing, you want to bring some sort of um, shielding. That pain is actually, uh, po poison is actually very, very deadly. And it is fixed 2000 damage from that. So you need to have full HP at that point. Again, Moon Realm will help, although it's not guaranteed. However, I do have Bambuku Shower to remove those statuses. And in terms of the actual drop, we do have Int down already. Otherwise, the damage could be more severe. And then after taking additional 2000 HP damage from the poison, you could have lost a unit. And of course, you won't get full rewards if you lose any units. At this point, it's just we're coasting and riding to the sunset and the finish line here just finishing off an extra turn or two and we should be done although like i said i'm pretty sure i'm over 20 turns i think i counted anywhere from 24 or 25 by the time this fight is over so i do apologize for the long fight it's just that to satisfy the conditions of the win we had to do so and i really didn't want to make a mistake early on so you can see that 2000 uh pain uh poison is quite painful and we had all the shields up and Unfortunately, that was still deadly. Keep in mind that we also had a bind. You can see that our, some of our moves have been locked and we can't do anything about that because that Mizushi also has multiple status effects. So Moon Realm gear all the way here and guarantee you need to pack a status removal unit or else you're just going to run into problems during state wave three and wave four of this fight. Otherwise, not too bad. We got it done and surprisingly, um, actually took less tries than I expected. I know my sons were challenging this one and they had some troubles with some of the uh, status, but luckily we made it through and we got some extra Chrono Stones, some more Chrono Stones, and some Jade of Attack, which is not bad. All right, so let's bring up the uh, Grass to Loadout. Again, um, I think that Violet is definitely the MVP. Having the Int down and... Uh, Extra damage really, really helps. Myris can do some damage, but remember, some of the uh, requirements are light characters only. So if you're wondering why I did pack Clark AS, he is a shadow unit, and so that would not be applicable for this stage. Uh, I think he can also use someone like, for example, AS Seal for the AoE effects, um, the type resist debuff, and so on and so forth. Again, Aldo is our Grass Slave, which is really unique to use him for a change, but his speed is fast enough to switch in on turn two. And finally, our tank, Bertrand. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.